Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this pretty summer reading bookmark. This bookmark has a lacy stitch in crochet thread, a simple fringe at the bottom, and the scalloped edging and the fringe kind of create a heart shape at the bottom. And then I've topped off these strands with some crystal and glass beads. So this is a very easy to make but elegant bookmark for your um, book. So for this project, you're gonna need a 2.75 millimeter C crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and then to string these beads onto these strands, I used, this is a cross stitch needle. Um, that's small enough to get through these bead holes. I also used uh, some beads. Any beads you have are fine. Uh, the crochet thread is pretty thin, so most beads will fit. These are little glass seed beads, so they're pretty tiny and they still slid very easily onto the thread. And speaking of thread, I used Aunt Lydia's Classic 10. This is the pastel variegated colorway and it kind of produces um, a rainbow effect when you work it up. So it's very pretty, very colorful, and um, easy to use, and you get a whole bunch of it, and it's not uh, terribly expensive. You get a lot uh, on a spool here. So let's get started. The finished bookmark measures about two and a quarter inches wide and if you want to use a tape measure while you're working to get the dimensions that's fine. It's not super important uh, to have the exact dimensions but uh, if you want to you can use a ruler. And the main part of the bookmark is about six inches tall and then with the fringe added it came out to be about nine inches long. I also wanted to mention that when I made my bookmark I used a bookmark I picked up at the library as a guide just to make sure I was getting kind of a standard bookmark size and it's pretty close to the one I had. So if you have one on hand you can use that as a guide as well. We're going to make our own mini version of this. I'm going to show you how to do the first couple of rows and then how to add this fringe and do the sparkly beadwork at the bottom. So to begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, and bring up a loop. This uh, lace pattern is very easy to do. And we're going to actually, if we flip our bookmark over, we're gonna be starting here and working our way up. Okay, so what you're gonna do to begin is to chain 14. So let's get a little bit of this thread off of here. And when you're working with a tiny hook and thread like this, you will definitely want to take your time until you get a few rows in and then you can pick up speed. But sometimes it, with a tiny hook and thread, um, for some people it can be hard to see um, and it, it, it can be a little fiddly. So just take your time with it. So we're gonna make 14 chains as our starting chain. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. And if you're using a variegated thread, this is a really fun thing to do because the colors change so frequently and it makes for an interesting project as a finished project, but also while you're working on it. The color changes are fun to see as you're making the stitches. So let's work on row one. In row one, in the fifth chain from the hook, this loop that's already on our hook does not count. So we're gonna count five. One, two, three, four, five. So in this chain right here, we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, then two double crochets. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain, 
bring up a loop. Again, take your time with this. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So we're gonna make another double crochet, just like that. Then chain two, one, two. Then in that same chain, two more double crochets. So we're kind of setting up the foundation here for the rest of our bookmark. Okay, so we work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. So you have your first little uh, V. This is kind of a double V because there's two double crochets on either side. Next, we're going to skip two chains. So if you look at your starting chain here, one and two, and then in the next chain we'll work the same thing. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, all in that same chain. So two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet, all in that same chain. And you can see already the colors are changing. This looks equally pretty in a solid color as well. So definitely feel free to experiment with different there's lots of uh, really pretty threads out there on the market. Okay, next we're going to skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, we're gonna do the same thing. Two double crochet, one and two, chain two, one, two, gets a little bit more thread here. Okay, so we did two double crochets, chain two, then two more double crochets, all in that same chain. You can see already it's looking lacy. Very elegant, and the crochet thread is, um, you know, obviously very thin, so it's gonna lay nice and flat in your book as well. Okay, so now we have three of these Vs across. Then what we're gonna do in this very last chain here is work one more double crochet to finish off the row. Just one this time. There we go. So it should look like that. And that's gonna set up this first row for us. Okay, so row two, we're going to chain three. Grab my, one of the beads hopped over here. Okay, so we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. We're now going to be working into what we call the chain two space. This is the center of each one of these Vs that was formed by working a chain two in between. So this space is called the chain two space. So we're gonna do the same thing in each one of these chain two spaces across. You should have three of these Vs. Okay, so in this first V, we're gonna do the same thing two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So one and two, chain two and two double crochet. Okay, in that first V. Just like that. You can see they have a stacked appearance similar to our finished bookmark. Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing in the next V. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Okay, so one double crochet, two double crochet, let me get some more thread. We're working through our thread pretty quickly, but you'll have lots left over if you use this particular thread. Then chain two, then two double crochet. One and two. Okay, our next V is complete on this row. Then in that last V of the row, do the same thing. Two double crochet, one, two, chain two, one, two, then two double crochet. Just like that, okay? So it's looking very much like our bookmark at this point, our finished bookmark. Okay, now, when we did 
our turning chain, the chain three and turn from the previous row, in that space, not in the stitch, but in that space, we're going to work one double crochet. Now it might be off to the side a little bit, so you might have to turn your work. Just work one double crochet right into that space, and that is going to finish off the row. So row two is complete, okay? So to finish your bookmark, you're going to keep working row two over and over and over again until it's the length you want. Now again, mine was um, the main part of my bookmark, just this lace section was um, six inches tall. So I just kept working until it was about six inches tall using my little paper bookmark as a guide as I was working. Obviously, if you have a, a big book or you just want a smaller bookmark, you know, definitely make it as long as you'd like it to be. So again, repeat row two until your bookmark is as long as you like it to be, or six inches, whatever happens first or whatever you prefer. Now we're just going to cut the thread and fasten off, okay? Then we're going to take our tapestry needle and we're ready. Now, again, like I said before, we're making just a mini version of this. So you're just going to take your tapestry needle when your bookmark is as long as you'd like it to be, and then you're just going to weave in these two ends. And then I'm going to show you how to do the fringe part. Now, if you're not into the fringe, you can just leave that part off and just have just a lacy rectangular bookmark that looks equally pretty. This stitch really, really makes this yarn look very pretty, or this thread rather. Okay, then just thread the tapestry needle and weave in the other end. Now when you're working with variegated yarn like this, you'll want to try and stay in the same color so your, your tail does not show. So keep, like what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to keep this purple in the purple section so our tail gets um, blended in a little bit better. Okay, so you can just trim that off. Okay, so let's do the fringe part. We got our ends all weave, weaved in and everything. Let's go back to our bookmark. So we worked from the bottom up, which actually is going to become the top of your bookmark. This is actually upside down, unless you want your fringe to hang out of the top of your book, and then it'll be right set up. But anyway, we worked our, our rows. So when you're finished, you're going to have a scallop. This, this lace uh, pattern gives you a scalloped edge. So in each one of these V's, one, two, three, we're going to tie some fringe. And that gives a, a nice little, this kind of happened by accident, but it gives a nice little heart shape too on the bottom, especially if you're a book lover. That's a really uh, nice little bookmark to have if you're really into books or if you want to give it to someone special who might uh, also like books or someone in your book club even. So what we're going to do, and you can kind of, estimate this. We're going to cut three 12 inch strands. So one, you can totally estimate this. If you like to measure, definitely feel free to do that as well. I like to just eyeball things whenever possible. Okay, so we cut three 12 inch strands. So here's our little mini sampler here. I'm going to just put that right here. So take one of your strands and fold it in half then fold it in half again, okay? Now this top loop, so this is our cut end down at the bottom, one of the loops at the bottom. So this loop at the top though, we're gonna fold that so it makes like a, a smaller loop like that. Then you're going to, uh, again, at this top scalloped edge, pick one of these V's and just insert this loop into one of these V's, just like that, okay? Now open your loop back up and then send the ends through that loop. Just making a very simple fringe. If you've ever made a fringe scarf, it's sim very similar. Okay, and then just tighten it right on there, as tight as you can. That's gonna be our knot. So you wanna get that nice and tight. We're not gonna knot that anymore. Okay, so it looks a little bit like our finished bookmark. Getting closer and closer, take another strand, fold it in half, fold it in half again, Take that top loop that you made, the cut end is at the bottom, and thread that into the next V. Okay, so we're going to take that loop, send the ends through it, and tighten. Now, 
This is delicate. We're using thread. It's lacy, so you're not gonna wanna pull this too much. You'll stretch and distort the stitches. So just try to like push the knot up against it. Don't pull it this way, just push the knot up against it. And that'll help you um, keep those stitches from getting distorted looking. Okay, so the last piece of thread that we cut, fold it in half, fold it in half again. We're holding the top loop, the cut end is at the bottom. And that last V, we're gonna send that loop through there. Okay, open it up a little bit and send those ends through that loop. Again, gently tighten. We're not gonna pull, we're gonna push it up against that V, okay? So now we have three fringes. And this looks pretty too. You just wanna like trim it at this point and just have some fringe or put more fringe on, it's up to you. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is take all three strands like this. See how it looks like our, our finished bookmark. And then you're gonna tie a knot, the whole thing. Just wrap it around your finger, similar to when you're making a slip knot. And if you need to use your hook, I like whenever I'm making a knot like this, uh, a crochet hook, you can get it right in there and that helps a lot, okay? Because we're doing this fringe by hand and we're knotting this, um, each one will have its own um, variation in appearance. So this one, my heart was slightly bigger. This one is slightly smaller. It's all good. Both look very pretty. So then what you're gonna do is go to the bottom and then just take your scissors and trim the bottom so that there's no more loops. There's just all straight pieces here, okay? So then what you can do, I'm not gonna do all the beads to show you, I'll just do one. You're gonna take one of your beads, either the glass or crystal or wood or what have you, whatever kind of beads you have. You're just gonna put that right on there. If you can't get uh, that threaded, just use your little cross stitch needle. Then you're just going to tie a quick knot like that, and then trim, I know this is really tiny, but trim that off right below the knot, just like that. And then you can just let your bead kind of fall down. So each one of these strands, you're gonna repeat for the beads. If you're not into the beaded look, just leave it as a, almost looks like a tassel. Okay, so that's it. That's how you make the summer reading bookmark. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. And here is our finished bookmark. It looks very lovely. And this makes a fabulous gift if you're giving a book as a gift as well. So that's how you crochet the summer reading bookmark. Thanks so much for watching. And again, be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.